Taylor Sky Diego and I will be the facilitator for this week's Share the Joy session. So joining us today is Brother Jesse O'Neill and he will be speaking with us about how the joy of Mary can have a profound influence on the joy in our own lives. So Brother Jesse presently serves on the Provincial Council for the Marianist Province of the United States as the Assistant for Education. He is also the Chair of the Board of Regents Mission and Identity Committee for Chaminade. So thank you and again, Brother Jesse, for joining us today. And before we get started, um, let's just begin with prayer. So let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mary, our mother, you consented in faith to become the mother of Jesus. At the angel's announcement, you received the word of God in your heart, as well as in your body, and you brought life to the world. You conceived in your heart, with your whole being, before you conceived in your womb. Obtain for us a faith similar to your own, which will enable us to hear the word of God and carry it out. Let us imitate your motherhood by our faith, bringing Christ to birth in others who are in desperate need of him. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Brother Jesse to lead us in this presentation. Well, thank you so much. And as I said a, a few minutes ago, I'm, I hope I can make my way back there uh, in the not too distant future and meet uh, many of you in person, you know, uh, one day. Um, so this afternoon, um, I want to share with you some uh, reflections on uh, the joy of Mary. And I want to applaud uh, campus ministry for providing this weekly series of presentations uh, centering around the theme of joy. And God knows that during this challenging time over these past several months, we have what is a beautiful theme to focus on, where we are all in need of reminders of joy that exist in our lives each and every day. As a Marianist brother, I have to tell you that I am so proud to be part of this Marianist gift to the world because I believe more than ever that our gift of Mary and Jesus is more relevant today than ever before. We are in difficult times. We continue to journey through a pandemic that has changed our lives, and we see the emergence of the cause of justice around racial equality. So as I said, this afternoon I want to focus on the person of Mary, the joy of Mary, and how she might inspire us to see the joy in our own lives. Now, each of us has a mother who gave birth to us, who brought us into this world, just as Mary brought Jesus into this world. And as I continue my words, I would like you to remember your own mother at this time. And whatever that relationship feels like for you right now in your life, let it dwell in your heart right now. Perhaps your relationship with your mother is close and filled with connection. Perhaps the relationship is strained or distant. Perhaps your mother still walks this earth where she has gone on to heaven. Whatever that relationship is with your mother, hold it in your heart right now. And I would like right now to introduce you to my mother by sharing with you this next slide. This is my mother, Dorothy. This is a picture of her last month 
on her 90th birthday, September 15th, the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows. I'll say more about that later. I am not the one taking the picture, for you see, I am sitting outside the window at my mom's nursing facility in Pennsylvania because of the COVID-19 restrictions. I share the story of my own mother these past seven months because her recent journey is intricately tied to the journey of our mother Mary and the journey in our own life. If you recall, last April, we were at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. People were suffering all over the world. And this reality gave Holy Week a truly deepened meaning to all of us. This is the week where we relive the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. On the Wednesday night of Holy Week, I received a phone call at my Marianist community in St. Louis, Missouri, that my mom's three roommates were all being sent to the hospital, presumed to be COVID positive. My mom was asymptomatic that night they were going to put her on a COVID medicine treatment. I had never felt so helpless in my entire life. I could not see her because they would not let anyone into the facility. And that night I cried feeling utterly helpless. And as Holy Week continued, I reflected on how Mary must have felt at the foot of the cross watching her son die. Utterly helpless. Or was she? Did Mary find a joy and a strength in that moment? on Calvary. The following week, I learned that my mom's three roommates passed away from COVID. My mom, Lana, and Bernice were beautiful women, and I, I wish I had had more time to discover more of their incredible life stories. A life story that each of us has, filled with hope, sadness, pain, and joy. My mom eventually tested positive for COVID and was in isolation for close to a month. Today, she celebrates three COVID negative test results. And by the grace of God, we were able to celebrate her 90th birthday last month. I share this story of my own mother because it is the story each of us has experienced or will experience. Stories filled with both hope and fear, sadness and joy. I put up this next picture of my mom. And I love this picture because there is a peace as she looks out before her. What might lie ahead? What might lie ahead for each of us in our lives? And how can Mary be an inspiration for us to see and create joy 
in our own lives and in the world in anticipation of what will lie ahead. As we put up our next slide, we see the words, Mary is the cause of our joy because she brings Jesus into our world. Mary gives birth to a son, just as your mother gave birth to you. Now, along with the other men on this Zoom call, we will never experience what it is like to physically give birth to a child. It is a moment of great pain and perseverance, followed by the joy of a new life coming into this world. So you see, suffering and joy go hand in hand. Suffering and joy. I heard it once said that one cannot fully embrace the joy and the promise of the resurrection until they have experienced in some way the crucifixion. That moment in life when you drop to your knees relying on God because of what is happening within you or around you. Dropping to your knees. I believe collectively the country fell to its knees when we watched a knee placed on the neck of George Floyd for eight minutes. A moment of crucifixion. What followed was the joy in fighting for justice, the joy of making a difference, the joy of finding your voice. And there was one day when it was quoted that George Floyd's daughter, four years old, was heard saying, Daddy is changing the world. That moment was given purpose. And with purpose comes love, hope, and ultimately joy. This next slide shows Mary at the Annunciation. A moment of purpose for Mary. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your word. Mary embraces the moment and becomes an instrument of God. And no matter what happens going forward, she is going to be okay because she has found her purpose rooted in God. When Mary says, how can this be since I have no husband? It is not prompted by doubt or skepticism, but with wonderment. And it is followed with a joy-filled yes. And then as we look at our next slide, we see the image of the visitation. Mary's sense of purpose deepens as she meets her cousin Elizabeth. This baby is now growing in her womb. 
a sense of joy in what is to come. And as she encounters Elizabeth, this is not the gentle, tender, dreamy Mary whom we sometimes see in paintings, but instead, this is the passionate, proud, and enthusiastic Mary who speaks out her Magnificat. My soul rejoices in God my Savior. It is a strong, inexorable song about collapsing thrones. It is a song about the power of God. And it is that song that was sung on the streets of this nation for George Floyd and countless others. And Mary's purpose in our next slide ultimately takes her to the foot of the cross. I shared earlier that I reflected this past Holy Week on Mary at the foot of the cross. I felt so helpless as my mom was isolated in a nursing home surrounded by COVID. But was I helpless? And Mary, oh, how she must have felt so helpless as she watched her son dying on the cross. Was she helpless at that moment? Absolutely not. There is a message for each of us in the person of Mary at the foot of the cross. She bravely stands there as Jesus hangs in torment. She did not cower. She did not run. She did not excuse. She did not compromise. She pointed to the moment as she stood at the foot of the cross. She was now living her Magnificat. The fortitude of Mary, standing beside the outcast and standing against the mighty on their thrones, displays a humble courage. She risked everything for love. And in her heart, there is a joy in knowing that this is not the end of the story. That life and hope and joy will always win in the end. She risks everything for love. So I guess my message to each of us today is that, like Mary, our purpose, our purpose in this world is rooted in God's love. And it is a love that experiences both pain and joy. I put this final slide up because, quite frankly, this phrase has become a mantra for my own life. And I share it with you in the hope that you can embrace it as well. Pain is inevitable. Misery is optional. Pain is inevitable. Misery is optional. 
I believe that when we can embrace the true meaning of this phrase in our life, and we will experience an increase in joy. A joy that is not necessarily a la la, happy, happy, smiley joy, although those moments are wonderful, but rather a joy that comes in knowing that like Mary, we have a purpose in life. And that purpose is to bring the love of Jesus to the world. And I know that in the sharing of that love, there may be moments of pain and sorrow. That is inevitable. But I choose not to be miserable about it. I choose not to wallow in it. Rather, like Mary, I stand in the midst of it, knowing that Jesus' love for me is so great that I'm going to be okay. So to the students who are on this call today, I can only imagine of how you might be hearing my words through the lens of your youth. A lens that allows you to see so much in our world that has the potential to numb us and discourage us. So many young people today try to avoid pain at a level that can cause depression and deep sadness. Pain is inevitable. Misery is optional. Love is a choice. Forgiveness is a choice. Being joyful is a choice. This is how Mary lived. We are called to follow her example so that we are led more closely to her son, Jesus. So in the next slide, there are some, some reflection questions. And I, I sort of saw the next part of our time together, not as much as a question and answer kind of a session, but, but of course you can ask me something if you like. But I see this as an opportunity for a rich sharing based on what we've heard. Um, this, this, this afternoon. And so the questions, as you'll see, the first one, how can Mary play a deepened role in how I experience joy in my life? What is your sense of purpose? How is God calling you to bring joy to the world? And finally, what moved you or inspired you from the words heard today. So we're just gonna pause for about a minute, just to reflect on what I've shared with you. And, and then after a minute or so, then Taylor is going to, uh, to take over and facilitate you know, our face sharing going forward. Thank you all for your respectful listening.
Well, um, thank you, Brother Jesse, for that truly beautiful presentation. I, I, I'm honestly at loss for words because I really wasn't expecting that presentation. And I think it's something that I personally needed to hear. So for that, I, I truly thank you from the bottom of my heart. And moving forward with your reflection questions of our sharing in our faith session, would anyone like to maybe answer one of Brother Jesse's questions? Either one of them or before we get into the more questions beyond his reflection questions that he provided for us? Would anyone like to share a response? Well, I'll let you guys think about that, but I'm gonna go ahead and answer one of your questions if that's okay, Brother Jesse. For me, I think my answer to your, how can Mary play a deepened role in how I experience joy in my life? My answer kind of ties into what moved you or inspired you from the words heard today. And when I heard those questions, one of the first things I thought about was, wow, I really truly don't give Mary enough credit because I, we always hear and learn about how she's the mother of God and how she brought Jesus into the world. And, you know, we even celebrate Jesus at Christmas and we always talk about that, but I feel like we fail to really think about how important and significant Mary's yes was and her entire, her, her contribution to the world today. And for me, I think I need to remember that more and maybe share with my peers about how important she is. Because again, like I mentioned, I don't feel or I feel like there isn't enough appreciation for our Blessed Mother. And so I definitely need to work on building my veneration for her and and imitating her love and her willingness to serve God in the way that she did. And I hope to integrate that better into my life. So I think it was just very eye-opening for me, your words today and everything that we heard from you was just very eye-opening and a, a good reminder, a gentle reminder, um, how much of Mary's love can be implemented into our lives so that we can share that love with others. So thank you. Wanted to answer a question. Um, uh, thank you again uh, for just a really great presentation, like just exactly what Taylor said. But I guess for the part or for the question that asked what moved you or inspired you from the words you heard today. Um, correct me if, I wrong, if I'm wrong, I'm not sure if I got this right, but I think you said um, one cannot fully embrace the joy of the promise of the resurrection until they felt a little bit of crucifixion. Um, and I find that, I thought that was very um, moving in terms of, I think I've recognized for myself and for people that I know, um, a lot of the times they don't recognize like the power of like God in their life until they've hit rock bottom. Um, and it's such a sad thing to say because I don't want to say like that's the only time most people rely on God, but um, I think you fully embrace like the Holy Spirit and you fully embrace like God's love once you have. And um I think that's just like such a beautiful thing and it, it ties into a lot of what we've been experiencing now like I go to this one online church service and I think throughout this entire pandemic they've just gained like a million viewers during this time and like more people are coming to the church and more people are like I guess acknowledging religion their faith spirituality and it's just such a beautiful thing so i mean despite how crazy life is right now i think the one thing that i'm so grateful for is just um how much 
my eyes have opened um, because of everything that has happened. And that that's kind of what um, I was thinking of throughout the entire time that you were speaking about that. So thank you. You're welcome. I also just wanted to add, sorry, <laughs> what you said, Sav, about, um, and also what you mentioned, Brother Jesse, about how you need to go through the crucifixion to embrace the joy. And like, just what you mentioned, Sav, just to add on, I feel like that's also the point at which we feel like the only thing we can do is surrender to God, just surrender everything that we have, because at that point, I feel like we have nothing else to turn to or... And, and that's truly when, like Seth mentioned, our eyes are opened and we are faced with a beautiful realization that God has always been there for us and he's never really left and we've never really been alone. And I also wanted to just comment how beautiful that quote you said um, that misery is an option. Oh, no. Yes, pain is inevitable. Misery is an option. And I think that that is so true. <laughs> and I just, again, wanted to thank you for your wise and beautiful words. So I'll give it a couple more minutes for anyone that may want to maybe share their response to these reflection questions that Brother Jesse has so graciously provided for us. I had a thought. It was more building on what you've been talking about already, because as I look at the group, I know that um, several of you have been out to uh, WCCC. Um, you've gone to class with Kimmy. Um, and I think they're real examples. So many of those women are real examples of people who have um been so knocked down and yet in that they have found that peace and joy in the resurrection and especially in forgiveness because when i hear them talking about they got a lot more to forgive than i do in terms of anything and yet that's the story that they talk about as a major part of their conversion was to to forgive the people who really were just awful to them. And they said, I forgave them. And um, I think that's it. And, and, you know, you figure Mary probably had to do that too. You know, that these people who were out after her son and who killed her son, you know, how did she hold it all, all together? You know, and forgiveness had to be a, be a part of that. And, I think the other thing is, is that I think like you were saying is that when things do go bad, there's the reminder, no bad, matter how bad it gets, you know, uh, it's not necessarily that our prayer is going to change what happens. But the difference is, is that we know we're never totally abandoned. And, you know, Jesus is always going to be there with whatever we're going through because you can't explain some of the, hor the horrible things that happen. Like if it's, it's people who are, 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 you know, made into slaves or abused or whatever, you know, those, th those things happen, but they're never abandoned, you know, and Jesus is with them there. And we know everything's gonna be all right in the end. Before we, um, oh, I'm sorry, Did somebody start. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to answer the same question that Savannah did. What moved you or inspired? Um, out of everything, um, probably your reference or your tie to George Floyd, um, because that's not something that we talk about much. 
um, especially not out here, and especially not in spaces like this. Um, and yet, as far away as we are, um, at least for me, I was deeply affected by that. Um, and so I, I appreciated the connection you made, um, but also speaking on the joy that it came out of that in regards to people raising their voices, coming together, um, and fighting for what's right and fighting for accountability and um, to be given the space to speak on that um, and to be recognized whether the knowing the pain or the joy. Um, I think it's kind of a touchy subject um, and it still is and um, I just appreciated um, you tying that into the presentation because I think sometimes for those of us Christians, we see there's always a like a disconnect um, when it comes to the gospel and people on the margins as listed in the Bible compared to those in the margins of society that we've created. Um, and so, yeah, I, I appreciated the connection made there. Thank you. So if there are no more responses to Brother Jesse's reflection questions. I want to take this time now to maybe add any more comments or questions that we may have for Brother Jesse or anything anyone really just has on their mind, just to kind of add to our conversation, our great and, and enriching conversation. So we just invite you all to maybe I think uh, building on Maimoa and uh, Jesse, your comments uh, on George Floyd, but um, I really enjoyed the connection. You reminded us and you gave us, I think one of the visuals was, you know, this wonderful picture of Mary, not, uh, again, not the demure, not, you know, she's the prophet, you know, who's saying to us, and she brings, you know, that dimension of, of not just our personal conversion, uh, but the necessity of us paying attention to the structures of the societies in which we live and that ultimately God pays attention to those structures uh, of violence and will bring them down. And, and God brings those down precisely because we choose joy uh, instead of despair, because we choose uh, to uh, engage with our neighbors and, and we choose to be part of the solutions. And again, I, I think that's the great you know, the wonderful part of her prayer and to juxtapose, you know, Mary, who is, uh, you know, this prophet of uh, the great social change with Mary, who, you know, stands, uh, kneels. Uh, I, I sometimes imagine how we have the picture, of course, of her standing near the cross as it's written uh, in John. But, you know, you imagine, you know, the knees becoming a little weak and, you know, as she's you know, thinking and she's with her son in that in that moment. But, you know, there's nothing in that, you know, which is weakness. There's only strength. There's only a sense of saying, yes, you know, uh, let this be the change, you know, that the, that, that the world needs. And to give thanks for that change, even in the midst of such sorrow and such pain. Uh, so again, thank you for juxtaposing those for us. Marianus recently withdrew from a, a parish that we were in for uh, many decades in, uh, in Maryland. I actually lived in that community for many years. And uh, when I spoke at our farewell, that was at the height of the George Floyd, um, you know, experience, for lack of a better word, for the country. And one of the things I said in the congregation, and I know that I was pushing the envelope, and I know that I was going to tick people off in those pews. But what I said to them was, why, when I mentioned George Floyd and racial injustice, you will look at me and say that I'm being political? 
And I paused after I said that. And then I looked out to the congregation. And I said, what we are experiencing now with racial equality is at the heart of the gospel. At the heart of the gospel. And so we, we shouldn't have to apologize when we're speaking out of the gospel. You know, all you have to do is read the life of Jesus. He was all about embracing the George Floyds of the world. You know, and so, and, I, and again, I think it's out of that, that connection and that anguish that we, we find joy and hope, you know, for the future. And, um, you know, so I, I really appreciated, you know, you know, you, you know, bringing that point up specifically because I think it's so, so important. And I think often we shy away from these issues because we're afraid of upsetting someone. We have to be bold. We have to take a risk. Remember one of the things I said, risking everything for love. If, if what you're saying is rooted in love, then it's, and it, then it's of God. How about the, uh, the thing I invited you to do with your own mother? I asked you to connect to your own mother at the beginning. Would anyone want to, to comment on what that reflection was for you in light of the words that I then went on to say? Was there any movement for you? Any commentary? Was it a, a reaffirmation of the relationship? Was it a shift? of the relationship. Uh, anybody want to share anything that went on within you around that? Well, I'll share. Um, <clears throat> So I was, of course, baptized and partially raised uh, Catholic um, until my parents got divorced. And then I was with my father, who um, is Protestant. And uh, we moved to Alabama, where it's uh, a large, large, large population of Protestants. Uh, it's the Bible Belt, as they also call it. But um, yeah, so my relationship with Mary uh, didn't develop quite like uh, maybe other people's relationships, especially if you're raised Catholic uh, in particular. And so I had a, a very, uh, a varying view of Mary as I, as I grew up in uh, a largely Protestant population. And uh, yeah, it was really, it was really interesting. But I remember when I was in seminary studies and uh, as I was much older, not as a child anymore, but as I was much older and I still had those kind of mixed feelings and understandings like who, who is this Mary, you know, and uh, really how, what's so significant about her. I mean, yeah, you know, Taylor was just talking about how we hear quite often she's the mother of God. That's a pretty big deal when you think about it, if you really, really think about it, you know, but um, what does that mean for me? I mean, she's the mother of God. What does that mean for me? And, uh, and I, don't, I don't know if too many people reflect on that part of, uh, of the relationship that we can have with Mary. So um, when I was in seminary studies, I, I remember uh, one summer I was, uh, I was in Omaha, Nebraska at Creighton University for uh, a summer uh, seminary and program, priestly for, formation pro program. And they challenged us. Uh, there's probably, I don't know, uh, there had to be near 100 seminarians studying for priesthood who came from different dioceses around the entire nation uh, there at Creighton that summer. And they said, look, a bunch of you dudes, a bunch of you guys here, uh, you, need to, you need to understand your relationship with Mary and what's going on with that. And I was like, what? You know, like, no, she's cool. Like, yeah, um, I, I'm cool with Mary. Um, but I wasn't. And, uh, and part of that was, and this is going back to Brother Jesse's um, prompting about 
our own mothers, um, I realized that I needed to uh, mend some things with my own mother. And um, I remember that summer is just super significant. My, I started to draw lines and connections between my relationship with my mother and my relationship with my mother in heaven, you know, like my, my godly mother, my Mary, our mother, you know, and um, it was really, uh, it was life changing really uh, during that summer. And I don't have time to, we don't have time to, to go through the whole thing. But what I realized was I needed to uh, make right some things with my relationship with my mom, which paved the way to um, understand and write the relationship with my my uh, heavenly mother or our, our church mother. Um, and when I started to do that and open my heart to that, uh, God, and I believe too, Mary started to heal some wounds in a way that I was not expecting and, uh, and I really needed. And it, and it, so not only did my relationship with my earthly mother um, grow and strengthen and deepen, but the same happened with, of course, uh, Mary, um, my mother, our mother. Um, as well. And it was, a, it was an amazing thing. So if I had to say anything to wrap all that up is that I think when we open up our heart, so we talk about how God can use us and change us and do great things when we open up ourselves to that, to his will and God's will. I think that same thing happens when we open up our, ourselves and our hearts to um, the help and the relationship that we can also have with Mary. And I'm speaking in kind of like general terms for um, on a spiritual level, like our, our relationships with the, the communion of saints, you know, as we, uh, as Catholics, we talk about our connection with these um, awesome uh, human beings that went before us, these awesome Christians who have went before us, these saints and, and wonderful holy men and women. Um, but in particular with Mary, uh, there's an amazing relationship in which we can have um, that draws us, that relationship draws us to a much deeper and beautiful relationship with her son, Jesus Christ. I truly, truly believe that. It took a long time to do that, but, um, and again, that was part of my relationship with my mother um, that led into that. So it was beautiful. My relationship with my mother got better. My relationship with my heavenly mother got better. And my relationship with Jesus Christ got better. So it was like, boom, 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 win, win, win. Um, so thanks, brother, for, for asking about that. The, uh, and talking about uh, and leading us into that thought of our mother. Now, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, brother had talked about at the beginning. He doesn't know. I don't know how people's relationships are with their earthly mother. But is that a way to understand um, Mary and her son later as well? So that's a that was a good prompting, brother. So I appreciate that. Thank you. So I just uh, want to jump on to that. Um, you know, I do think there's, for me, um, a way which Mary uh, continues to form. Um, and I believe that because, for me, because I believe that, um, you know, she is a good example, the best example of what being a disciple of Jesus uh, was or is. And so uh, by reflecting on her and reflecting on her responses um, to Jesus, I think that does influence the way we respond to him. Um, so I, I say this and I, uh, you know, speak about Mary that I, I do think she can be a formative person in our lives in a way that she formed Jesus in his humanity. She had to. Every mother forms their children as a human being. Um, but I think Mary can form us spiritually too. And um, that's all about being reflective and opening ourselves to her um, and to her son. So... I think that's possible, and I think it's part of marrying the spirituality. So.
So just to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, so to be respectful of everyone's time, does anybody else have any final thoughts, questions, responses to anything that has been said either by Brother Jesse or for anyone who's shared with us today? Um, we can take maybe a minute or two for you to say your piece. Let me add to the thanks for uh, you all coming together to reflect on you know this uh, joy of Mary. Uh, it really is, uh, when you think of all the places that you could work or make a living and so on, I mean, this is why I've been at Chaminade 37 years and, and, and the Marianists have been so kind and, uh, you know, supportive of, of me throughout my life since I was a freshman in high school. And Brother Steve Rout at the time, you know, took me under his wing and, uh, you know, with, it, it was the beginning of a profound uh, journey. So. But thank you for you know doing this because again it shows me why you know this is what it means to be part of a Marianist place, and uh, thank you all. So if there are no other responses or comments, Dr. Coleman, you actually took the words right out of my mouth. That was something I actually wanted to thank everyone here for as well because. I grew up in a, in a public school, so I, I never knew about the Marianists and really anything about them until I moved out here for school. And I can honestly say it was very eye-opening and very, it, it was a completely different way of life, I want to say. So um, I just want to thank you, Brother Jesse, for sharing the joy of Mary with us and, and for all of every, everyone here, all of the brothers, all the Marianists that I've encountered so far. It's, I've, it's truly, and it's been an incredible, incredible four years. And I'm so grateful to have encountered every single Mariness that I have, because I can see the love of Mary reflected in the way that they treat others and in the way that they live their lives. And so it's, it's so beautiful. And just like what Dr. Coleman said, they're so supportive and so kind and generous and, and everyone can just go on and on about how amazing the Marianists are. So I just wanted to reiterate how, how great they've been to, to me personally and to, to everyone that they know and meet. So with that being said, and with all of my thanks and for everyone here today, um, thank you again, everyone for your time and for the great conversations. But before we end, Brother Jesse is actually gonna lead us in prayer. Yes, that's our last slide. Before we enter into the prayer, um, my hope is there was, that there was one thing you heard, and we did get to hear from a number of people who shared that one thing, but I, my prayer is that there was one thing you heard uh, that you're able to take with you when this call ends. And then I encourage you to take that one thing and share it with someone. You know, that's how we spread that's how we spread this beyond ourselves. So I encourage you to do that. So for our closing prayer, um, I will uh, read the, the statement and then if you would all respond uh, with the response uh, that you see. Mary, wellspring of peace. Be our guide. Model of strength. Be our guide. Model of gentleness. Be, be our guide. Model of trust. Be, be our guide. Model of patience. Be, be our, our guide. guide. Model of courage. Be, be our, our guide. guide. Model of risk. Be, be our, our guide. guide. Model of openness. Be, be our, our guide. Model of perseverance. Be, be our, our guide. guide. Oppressed woman. Lead us, Lead us to, to life. life. Liberator of the oppressed. Lead, Lead us, us to life. life. Marginalized woman. Lead, Lead us, us to, to life. life. Comforter of the afflicted. Lead, Lead us, us to life. life. Cause of our joy. Lead, Lead us, us to life. life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. And again, as I said at the beginning, I hope I get to meet you all in person sometime soon. 
And if you see me, I'm six foot eight, you can't tell that now, but uh, you'll see me coming. And uh, please stop me and uh, introduce yourself to me and say, hey, I was on that Zoom call last uh, October. So I hope that happens uh, in, the near, in the near future. But thank you for the invitation. Jeremiah, thank you. I applaud you and, and, your, and your office for providing this kind of an experience, as I said at the beginning. Um, it's needed now during this time. So we thank you very much, uh, brother, uh, for our, for all of that. Before before we end uh, here, Ray is sharing her screen, and there's a just a few announcements that um, we're going to make of some upcoming things. So. Okay. Um. Sorry, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, before I go, I just want to let everybody know for all the Share the Joys, um, you can find it on our website under Community, under Share the Joys, and all the sessions will be here. So all the recorded sessions, if you guys want to go back, review, they're all going to be here, including the one we had today with uh, Brother Jesse. So thank you. Um, and then our announcements. So next uh, week, Wednesday, we have Share the Joy um, with Dr. Damien Costello. And um, I think uh, Father Marty is going to be facilitating that one. Um, same room number, same time. It's on authentic freedom. So it's really exciting. He's, he's, he's done a lot for the Indigenous group. So it's going to be a really great talk. Um, also, the following week after that, we have Eva Andrade, who's going to be doing the Joy of Citizenship um, on October 28th at 4 p.m. All are invited. Again, I do challenge all of you students or um, faculty and staff to come and invite a friend to join and share the joy with us. Um, these are really great conversations, and the more that we share the joy, the, the better. Um, on Monday at fourth night at 6.30 p.m., um, Father Marty is actually gonna do a talk for um, the folks, uh, the students who come to fourth night on Marianist spirituality, all are invited. On October 20th at 4 p.m., um, we are gonna um, do the Mackie lecture. We're gonna do a watch party together with a discussion with Father Alapaki. Um, the YouTube chat um, video is already up if you guys wanna watch it, but we definitely will have a follow-up conversation with, Dr., um, with Father Alapaki on racism in Hawaii that he did um, uh, a week ago, I believe, with some of our students. So all are invited to attend. Um, on October 23rd, we have the St. Luke Blessing of the School of Nursing and Health Professions, Healthcare Workers and Caregivers. We are going to be live streaming this on our Facebook at the Mystical Rose Oratory Facebook, as well as the Chaminade University Facebook, and you guys are all invited to come and log on. Um, these are some of the events from OSAL. Um, there are challenges coming up this week. They have the October Step Challenges. So it's not too late to sign up and scan and um, check your steps, but there are prizes. They also have the Mass Singer. Um, the signups are from the 16th to the 18th. Um, but basically, a uh, Mass Singer is you're going to be wearing a mask. So nobody knows you. So if you want to sign up and share your talents, that would be great. But they have a bunch of prizes that they're trying to give away. Um, they're also doing a um, four square um, as intramurals, um, trying to be a little bit safe with social distancing. So this is a really awesome event if you want to come out and like get fit and healthy and they have prizes. Um, the World of Dance is doing workshops all this week. So this upcoming one is the Red and, uh, red and White out with Elena and she's going to be doing some Tahitian dancing and teaching you. So definitely come join on Zoom and you don't have to show your camera. You can hide and just practice if you want to learn some, some Tahitian dance. Um, Pono, I don't know if you want to share uh, your slide, but you can drop into his office. Yeah, um, it's funny, as you were bringing up the announcements, I actually tried to slyly go back into the announcements PowerPoint and delete the fall internship fair. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> but anyways, no, 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 it's okay. But definitely um, come visit yeah, him in work. his office. Respectively. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, just got to hear from a lot of good organizations doing good work, respectively. 
um, you know, the umbrella of things they already do collectively. Um, but yeah, just my weekly drop in advising sessions outside of my normal um, appointment blocks. So 11 to 12 or 5.30 to 6.30 every Thursday um, until the Thursday before Thanksgiving. That's the Zoom ID. Um, so yeah, I mean, questions, concerns, comments, um, maybe FAQs you have about internships or about any of the presenters that were at our fair, if you want to know more info, if you couldn't make it. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to, receive, uh, to save the recording. Um, it got corrupted somehow, so I have to figure out what to do with that. But um, plethora of information to give, so drop in if you can, or just shoot me an email. Um, I'll put it in the chat. Thank you. Awesome. And I think that's it for, I think that's it for announcements. Oh, no. Um, the last one. Ooh, sorry. Um, they have uh, Be Kind to Your Mind. That's Thursday, October 15th. That's from um, the Tutoring Center. Um, it's just an opportunity for you guys to just um, do some nice um, feeling type of stress-free um, events. But that's from the Tutoring Center. Um, also, you can go to the advising office to get cake pops on Thursday and Friday from 11 to 1 p.m. So please come um, while supplies last. So I guess it's a first come, first serve. And then finally, the Marinish Leadership Center um, is having their, I think their, this is their final workshop for the semester on November 4th at 3 p.m. Zoom. And it's basically on finding common ground. So conflict resolution workshop. I believe that's all the announcements. If anybody else has any more announcements. If no one has other announcements, can we all just do me a really big favor and possibly smile for a little quick picture that I'm gonna take of all of us just to remember. And, and I really wanna show my, my friend Father George, that you have joined us, Brother Jesse. So I definitely wanted to send his this his, send him this picture. So can everyone please smile? Ready on the count of three. One, two, three. Awesome. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. -bye. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you, everyone. Good seeing you, Jesse. You too. Thank you. Thank you again. Thanks, Brother Jesse. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>